have the dielectric breakdown strength for different materials. Notice that these are given in units of volts per meter, so they're given in electric fields. That's basically the maximum electric field. Here, for example, you see air can have about 3 million volts per meter. So if there's so much static buildup between the ground and the cloud, okay, remember we drew this picture how the cloud gets electrically charged, that, what do we, we call that phenomenon where the ground as a result gets a charge? No, 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 not, no, not there yet. It's not like it yet. Okay, some of you are too impatient. Okay, the cloud is positively charged. It attracts negative charges at the ground level. We call that induction. We call that an induced charge. Okay, so now this is pretty much like a capacitor. We now have a potential difference. Okay, and we have a distance. The clouds are at such and such a height. So that means that there's an electric field building up here. And if there's enough charge, more and more charge, and more and more charges over here, at some point, that electric field, the volts per meter, are going to be so big that the air becomes a conductor, and that's when lightning is going to happen. Now, okay, and same thing with all these uh, materials, all those dielectric. One more item. Okay, capacitors are going to be one of the three uh, important devices that we use to study electrical circuits. We're going to talk about resistors, capacitors, and inductors. So capacitors are the first ones that we encounter. And for now, all we use the capacitor for is for storing charges. There's a uh, sort of misconception, like when people say, I'm going to recharge my, you name what, you know, iPhone, uh, Power Mac, or any of those good things, anything made by Apple, basically, anything really cool. Bill Gates, where are you? Uh, send me a million dollars and I'll fly to Microsoft, but no, I do have some standards. But for a million dollars, I undergo dielectric breakdown. Uh, anyway, anything that needs recharging, like one of these devices, uh, see how I use the word recharging? It's, you know, it's part of the language. People think that we're putting charges back in. That's really not what's happening when you recharge an electrical device. Okay? A battery does not store charges. A battery has a potential difference, and you build up that potential difference. But a capacitor will store charges. So a capacitor is a device on which we can put charge. So here we go again to the one million line. But now I want to take the point of view of the energy. If, if I start with an uncharged capacitor, a very fresh capacitor, and I'm going to charge that capacitor. So as I mentioned, what I'm doing is I'm going to take an electron from over here, take that electron by its little electron gears, drag it all the way around and put it over here, okay? And as a result, this has now a charge of plus one electron. Well, I'll have to put that plus E, and this is now minus E, okay? And that's fine, I can in principle do that. Now, I'm not proposing to do it one electron at a time, but in principle, sure. So now, I would take the next electron, go in there with my electron tweezers, grab an electron, drag it over here. Well, do we see that that's already becoming more difficult because I'm thinking, and I could drag it across if you like that badly. It didn't want to mess up my drawing. It doesn't matter how I do it. Just remember, conservative forces doesn't depend on the path. So if I'm grabbing an electron from over here, I'm pulling it away from the positive plate. Well, the electron wants to be on the positive plate. It's attracted to the positive plate. And I'm bringing it to the negative plate, so it's being repelled by the negative plate. So the first electron, that's fine. I just yank it out, bam, put it on the plate. The next electron, I have the pullback from the positive charges and the repulsion from the negative. So it becomes a little bit more difficult. So as I keep going, as I build up more and more charges here, any new charge I want to bring here becomes increasingly difficult. Okay? So um, 
And I'm making that point for two reasons. Uh, first one is that, um, that I want to show that there is energy involved in this. I'm doing work, the way I'm describing this, I'm doing work. I'm working up a sweat here, moving all these electrons. Okay. Not to mention all these asses from no physics to physics. Um, and secondly, I also want you to see that it be, it's not a, a linear thing. It's not like each electron is just as difficult as the previous one. It's increasingly difficult. It, it's pretty much, there's a profound analogy, but it's too early on the day to be profound, between stretching a spring, where stretching the spring a little bit is easy, but the more you stretch the spring, the more difficult it becomes to stretch it further. Okay? You remember that? That's called Hooke's Law and all that good stuff. So same thing here. To, to build up more charges, it becomes increasingly difficult. So if I finally end up with Q and negative Q, one can show that okay, the potential energy for which I use Pp and the book uses U, but it doesn't matter, is equal to one half Q times B. Normally, potential energy is charge times voltage. Here there is a one half because I started with zero charge and I'm going to go to a total charge field. But that's a detail. Okay, so check out for me if you have nothing better to do that when I take coulombs <coughs> and I multiply by volts, then I get units of joules. Okay, and secondly, this is one way of writing the potential energy, but don't forget like a real idiot, I erase the relative equation, this always happens to me. Uh, but not to be outdone, we had that Q is equal to CV, so it also follows that this is equal to one half CV squared, and it also happens that if we solve this for what am I still missing? Um, totally no idea what I'm still missing. Q squared over, so I'm trying to eliminate Oh, yeah. uh, v is equal to Q over C. So if I plug that in here, I get Q squared over 2C. Okay, so either one of those three equations will give me the potential energy. It depends on what I'm given. If, if I'm given the charge and the capacitance and not the voltage, well, then I would use that equation. Okay, if I'm given the voltage and the capacitance, well, I would use the second equation. I'm not given any of these. I would hope that my neighbor knows how to do this and I would cheat on it. 